Okay, in this example here, I'm going to show you how we're going to find the angle between two straight lines. Now we've done this before, but we've done it in two dimensions rather than three. Here we've got two lines, and you'll notice that they're given in Cartesian form. Now Cartesian form for three uh, lines in three dimensions is not always a very satisfactory thing to work with because look at that, you've got two equal sign and it's handy to be able to convert that into parametric or perhaps into vector form and we can do more with that. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. So just to remind you then about vector form, here's the vector form of a line which is exactly the same for three dimensions as it was for two. We have a point on the line and we've got a direction that's parallel to the line. And to describe that line that we've got there, what we do is we get to a point on the line A and we move along B. So we have a multiple of the vector B and that will describe any point at all along that line. So here I want to change this Cartesian form into vector form. And the way that we do that is since all of these three things are equal then they must be equal to the parameter so let's set that we'll put them all equal to lambda so um, we can write three separate equations involving lambda for the three parts of the equation that we've got there There we go. Okay. Now, what I would in invite you to do now is to try and solve those equations for x, y, and z. So I'll give you an example for the first one. x is going to be equal to three plus two lambda. Pause the video and do the same thing for the other two. Welcome back. If you've done that correctly, then you should have the, these two extra equations here. Now this is in parametric form. We can easily convert this into vector form by using the following notation. So remember, uh, r is our vector, it's given as our position, and that's got three components to it, the x, y and z components, because we've got three dimensions. We've got a position, this is our point A that we know, and we've got our direction that goes here, and that's multiplied by a number, in this case our parameter. So we've got 3 plus 2 lots of lambda, minus 2, minus 1 lot of lambda, and 0 plus root 3 lambda. Now then, what you will hopefully remember is that this is the important thing that we need for the finding the angle between two lines because this is the direction of the line. Now then, if you find the direction of the second line then you'll be able to use the dot product to work out the angle between the two. And on, careful, uh, on carefully looking at the two equations you'll notice there's an easy connection between the equation that we've got here, the position of a point on the line, and the direction. And you should see that with these points here and these direction here. So you might be able to do a quick conversion there. So I invite you now to find the vector equation of the second line and then find the angle between them. Good luck. Okay, how did you get on? So, the second one should have a direction of 1, 1, root 3. Um, and I'm going to write those two directions as B1 and B2. And what I want to do is find the angle between those two. So I need to find the length of this vector, the length of this vector, and then the dot product between the two. If I've done that right, I've got the length of the first one to be root 8, the second to be root 5, and the dot product to be 6. So what I'm going to do to find the cosine of the angle 
is to have the dot product, so 6 over root 8 times by root 5. And what I need there, if you remember, is the acute angle. So it's making it really clear in the question which angle it wants. So if I type that into the calculator, that'll give me an angle, and it is an acute one there. I've checked my calculator in degree mode, and I've got an angle of 18.4 degrees for that. As easy as that.